Hello class and welcome to this installment of our Insightful Classroom series, where we cover 5 historical figures to fill and expand your minds with knowledge. Don't forget to subscribe for more in this series. So let's begin. Can you take a look at the board and guess the profession we will be discussing today? Yes, today we will be featuring the men and women in the medical field. Many of you sitting right here today may feature doctors and nurses yourself. So let's take a look at some of the ones that helped pave the way for blacks in medicine. This young lady became the first African American woman to become a doctor of medicine in the United States and the only female physician author in the 19th century and her name was Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Born Rebecca Lee Davis on February 8, 1831, she was raised by her aunt in Pennsylvania. During her youngest years, Rebecca's aunt would act as an appointed nurse in their community. It was those early experiences that would influence Rebecca's career choice later in life. At the age of 21, Rebecca moved to Charlestown, Massachusetts, where she began working as a nurse for the next nine years, between 1855 and 1864. In between those times, around 1860, she was accepted to New England Female Medical College. During this era, it was said that there were over 54,000 physicians in the United States, of which 300 of them being women, but none were African American. You see, it was rare for women, especially women of colour, to be admitted to medical schools, as it was deemed that women were too delicate to be doctors. However, the New England Female Medical College would be the first school in the country to train women MDs and due to the heavy demand for medical care for Civil War veterans, there were more opportunities for women physicians and doctors. Rebecca became the country's first African American woman to become a formally trained physician and the only African American to graduate from the college in March 1864, when she would be named Doctor of Medicine. Compler first began practicing medicine in Boston primarily serving poor women and children in the community. After the American Civil War had ended in 1865, she moved to Richmond, Virginia in aid of performing missionary work believing that treating women and children was the ideal way to utilize her talents. She would gain more experience learning about diseases that affected women and children during her time there and contributed this to being able to work with different patients across different social classes, those from poor families to middle class and a population of over 30,000 colored Americans. Also that year, the 13th Amendment was authorized, ending slavery throughout the country. Compler would work for the Freeman Bureau, which provided housing, food and medical services to aid free slaves who were denied general care. Despite her good intentions, she would face intense racism by both the administration and other physicians, facing difficulties getting prescriptions filled or being ignored by male physicians. Nevertheless, Rebecca and other African Americans in the field were undeterred and felt more encouraged to seek medical training in hopes to build a community dedicated to helping more people of color. Compler would move to 67th Joy Street in Boston which was a predominantly African-American community. She practiced medicine and through her kindness would treat many children no matter their social background or whether their parents had the ability to pay. In 1883, Rebecca would publish a book of medical discourses written from the notes she had kept over the course of her medical career. The book was dedicated to nurses and mothers who were focused on medical care of women and children. She wanted to use her past experiences to guide future nurses in the medical field and would recommend that women study the mechanisms of human structure before becoming a nurse in order to better enable themselves to protect those that they seek to help. The content of her book could be divided into two sections. In the first part focusing on preventing problems that occurred in young children around the teething period until the child was about five years of age. The second part of her book focused on life experiences such as womanhood, marriage, political, social and moral viewpoints. Rebecca even said in her book that it may be well to state that 
having been raised by such a kind aunt in Pennsylvania, whose usefulness with the sick was continued so after, she conceived an early liking for and sought every opportunity to relieve the suffering of others. Inherently, at the time of publishing her book, many books by African American authors had introductions written in a style of white male writers to give them more authentication. However, Crumbler was able to freely convey her own style and was able to justify her work based on her own authority. You see, Becca Lee Crumbler challenged the prejudice and became a true pioneer of African Americans in medicine.